So far this season, Carlos Sainz has been making a pretty good name for himself as a reliable, calm and most importantly, fast driver. Despite emergency surgery pulling him out of one of the four races so far this season, though the mad lad still did a full day's free practice while his appendix attempted to exit him, like George Russell exits high points positions when under pressure, Carlos Sainz still sits in fourth place in the Drivers' Championship, being the only non-Red Bull race winner this season and the only Ferrari race winner last season. Season. All of these facts shouldn't point towards a driver headed for the unemployment line, however that is the reality in which we reside, one where a talented driver just hitting the peak of his powers, with a team he is fully embedded in, is sent out the door on his merry way because a supposedly better option was available. Whether you believe that to be the case or not, it's hard to argue against the fact that Sainz has made Ferrari look pretty foolish so far this year with a comprehensive display of just how good he can be. If it weren't for his absence from the Jeddah race, he he would likely be above not only his teammates, but potentially Sergio Perez in the Drivers' Championship after the first four rounds. So why is it then that no word has been made on his future, and could it be that we may be about to witness the best driver to ever be left out of the sport due to either his high standards or the cruel fortunes of the grid? Want to know why Carlos Sainz may be on his way out of the sport entirely? Surely it wouldn't be fair, but when has life ever been? And stick around because the man holding the keys for his future may just let them slip after all. Time is of the essence more than ever this year, with the two-year silly season on the build-up to the new regulations getting kicked off in a massive way before the season even really started, there is no time to waste. Despite all the talk of teams having a relaxed approach to the driver's market, while a lot of talking will be done behind the scenes, Sainz is doing the most important talking on track, with a name to make him completely undeniable to the teams at the top of the grid. Off track, however, the language surrounding Sainz's driver market status seems somewhat off to me and perhaps shows signs that he is waiting for a better drive to become available. First, let's hear what he's had to say so far about his time in the F1 speed dating pool. I'm talking to a few teams because that's what my management team and myself should do when I don't have a job next year yet, so we're talking to pretty much all of them. And he would later go on to say, I have no clue where I will be next year. It's true we're talking to many teams. Sainz told Sky Sports F1 after his third place finish in Suzuka. I just need to keep focused on what I'm doing, prove to myself and everyone that when I'm given a fast car, I maximize what I'm given and deliver. It's been a strong start to the season. With this car, you can shine a bit more. With last year's car, I did performances similar to this year, but you couldn't shine which to us sounds as though there are some pretty key requirements not being met. It's all fine and well talking to many teams, but when those teams are Williams, Haas, and God forbid Alpine, then that means you're talking to them in the same way that Scarlett Johansson would talk to me. The other potential seats are, for want of a better term, sticky too. With Audi having all the ambiguity of a new team with a rumoured clown fiesta back at the factory, and Aston Martin being in the midst of Fernando Alonso playing a game of chicken with the driver's market just for the hell of it. At the end of the day, the question for signs is, just because a seat is there, does that really mean you want to fill it, regardless of the quality? The issue for Carlos Sainz, more so than anything else, is that the seats he's being offered are undesirable, or the seats he actually wants already have butts in them. One of these seats, and the one most often being referred to by the media recently, is at Red Bull, where the latter issue is currently the case. The man in the second seat at Red Bull is currently doing a pretty great job, however Sainz will surely be giving the Milton Keynes team some thinking to do, with yet another win under his belt and an incredibly tidy season so far. For the time being though, according to Christian Horner, Sergio Perez is doing exactly what he needs to do to retain his position at the team. It's his seat to lose. He's doing a great job and qualified within a tenth of a second from Max. It was by far his best qualifying performance around Suzuka. You can see his confidence is growing. His performance in the race again was very strong. He's doing exactly what was needed of him. Sergio Perez has been portraying a far more measured and relaxed media presence than his first few years with the team. However, in conversation with Sky F1, he made his intentions of securing his place at the team next year as early as possible clear, as he had this to say. I'm very relaxed about it. It's my 14th season in F1. Whatever comes next, I'm really pleased with what I've done in the sport so far, and I believe it will be a matter of time. The driver market is moving, and the next few weeks, there will be a lot of movement for sure. I expect in a month to really know what I'm doing next year. 
So realistically then, the only person who can stop Sergio Perez from no longer being at Red Bull is the man in the mirror. Good thing he is in the best car. He has a penchant for brawling on the circuit to secure second and has totally never completely lost all ability to make the most of these factors. Oh wait. Yeah, in case we all have short-term memories or something, it's hard to forget quite how brutal the past couple of seasons have been for Checo at times. At times, it felt like he was a mere race away from being sent to the Alpine Shadow Realm, due to his constant half-second discrepancy to his teammate in qualifying, infuriating inability to cut through the field while Verstappen did so like a hot knife, and constant delusions of fighting for a championship getting under everyone's skin at the team, including the bosses and the Verstappens. In spite of this though, Sergio has certainly had a strong start to the year, unlike… oh yeah, he did have a strong start last year, didn't he? Well, at least he didn't fail to capitalise on Verstappen's absence now, did he? Uh… Well, at least this year he seems grounded, with no outlandish claims of titles and a real lack of ego. Perez will humbly secure his seat for the foreseeable future, just so long as he doesn't let all of this early season success get to his head, right? Well, someone should have reminded Sergio of that, as apparently the Mexican driver has approached the leadership of Red Bull with some demands of a new contract to secure his position not only for next year, but for three years. The reaction must have been quite something in the room, and according to Robert Dumbos at Ziggo, it really was. For example, Perez went to that team yesterday in Japan and said, I want a three-year deal. At the table, there is a laughing reaction to the anecdote. Laughable indeed. That request is rejected by Marco. He says, no way, you have to give him a deal for a maximum of one year, because if you give him a two-year deal, he'll sit back and give up again. Let him run every year. Perhaps it also plays a role that next year's contracts are at stake, this year much earlier than usual. That also seems to be very motivating. Doombos hit the nail on the head at the end there, as every driver who isn't already tied down will be attempting to move up the grid over the course of the silly season. So of course, Sergio will want to have his seat secured at the earliest opportunity, because right now, the only way is down if he and Red Bull part ways. Having a man like Carlos Sainz breathing down his neck, who not only has already won a race so far this season, but also has a close history with Red Bull, will be a massive kick up the arse for Sergio Perez. But how he deals with that stimulation is down to him. Let's say Ferrari managed to catch up with Red Bull over the course of the year. If Perez cannot handle a straight fight in the same way his teammates can, then it may be a death blow for his time at Red Bull. However, theoretically by the time Ferrari catch up, then all the contracts may be signed, sealed and delivered, and it'll all be too late for Carlos Sainz. Something that could well be the case if Helmut Marko is to be believed, as he spoke about Red Bull's reaction to the sudden shift in the driver market. The driver market has exploded in April, and normally, nobody talks in April. It's ridiculous, but we won't jump into this game ourselves. We will wait and see, and only then make the best choice later on. I have heard that Audi is making pressure, but it is a little strange for a newcomer to make pressure on the driver market. So what do you think? Can Sergio Perez hold on to this seat, or will he let it slip in yet another capitulation as the season goes on? And what about Carlos Sainz? Do you think there's a chance he could just fall through the gaps? We certainly hope not. Let us know in the comments below, and thank you for watching.